everyone. Welcome back. This is Joni Stahl. I'm really looking forward to being here today. And let me tell you, before I get started with telling you with what I'm teaching you today or sharing, I like to just say teach, share, whatever the Holy Spirit is going to have me do. Maybe it's a combination of it all. But let me tell you something. I was not met with so much resistance as I've ever met. Like there's been a couple times I have doing these field notes. But let me tell you something. The enemy doesn't want me doing this one today. But I prayed over myself and over everything. So praise the Lord. And I'm going to get going, okay? I want to get started with this message. So what I want to talk to you guys today about is anointing. Not, not just the anointing coming upon you, you know, to do the works of God. I'm talking about anointing your homes. I believe with all of my heart that even as I'm speaking, I'm telling you right now, I can feel the presence of the enemy and I'm not giving him any airtime, but I'm only exposing him right now to let you know that not only do I feel his presence on my outside, but I'm feeling the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit within me. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to get started about the action of anointing your homes, even yourselves with oil, with holy oil of anointing. And I want to say this, that I am going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me. I have some things I want to share. I don't know. I mean, I, I have an email, a couple of emails from some people um, because they knew I was going to be doing this episode today. So let's see where that's going to fit in. But today, the reason why I'm doing it is because somebody reached out to me and said, Joni, will you please do an episode on anointing? And I said, absolutely. So um, just to inject this before I go on into the lesson. If there is something in particular you want me to teach, let me know. OK, um, and I'll pray about it. And mostly I will do it. Um, somebody asked me if I would teach on how to pray and i just want you to know if you're listening i am still going to do that um i just get so like i have like things i have lined up that i'm going to be teaching but i want you to know that i will be doing one on how to pray okay because i know that many of you that are watching i don't know sometimes you're you can be 20 years in the lord and you still really don't know how to pray and you can be just born again and you're like how do i pray now I just want you to know that that's coming. I'm looking forward to doing that. I believe I'm going to try, be, try to be doing that on Monday. I'm not going to promise because I like to put the Lord before me. But I did say I would do it and I always keep my word. So I'm going to go ahead now with this um, sharing lesson, however you want to see it. Now, many people have reached out to me and even people I've spoken to one on one. Um, they know what it means. They know what it is to anoint their homes and their objects or their children with oil, okay? And that term is very widely used. Like, well, just anoint your house with oil. Just go, go through your house and anoint everything. But you see, a lot of people do this thinking, I got to anoint my house every day. I got to anoint it every day. And I want to put that to rest, okay? Now, I am an avid believer in anointing myself with oil, with anointing my home with holy, consecrated, blessed oil. I fully believe in the anointing oil process, but I want to put it to you this way. I'm going to teach you just, you know, and I'm going to keep it light because I don't, I, I, that's, that's just my teaching style. I like to keep things light and flowing, okay? So I want to talk about the fact that anointing oil was primarily a Middle Eastern ancient Canaanite custom. It was just mainly used for, you know, they lived in arid places. So they were always using it for their skin because it was very dry. They used it in their bath products and, you know, grooming. It was used quite a bit for grooming. And then, of course, it went on to other 
uh, functions. It had other functions. I did make a couple notes, so I think I'm going to refer to it right now. Um, uh, let's see here. No, that's not the one. I just, I don't want to do this too much, but I just want to just set some things in motion. So we have that they used it for um, ordinary uses for the anointing of the body or the head. Um, it was common practice with the Jews. And uh, also it was also was used um, and in terms as being a mark of respect, sometimes paid to a host if somebody came into your home you would anoint their feet with oil um it was an official use there was an official use um it was a rite of inauguration into each of the three typical offices of the jewish commonwealth um the three jewish commonwealths were prophets priests and kings so we know that the prophets were occasionally anointed to their office and we have a scriptural reference for that, of course, many of us are familiar with. Um, and we have, of course, the priests. And at the first institution of the Levitical priesthood, they were all anointed with oil to their offices. And we can read that in Exodus 40, verse 15 and Numbers 3, 3. But afterwards, anointing seems to have been specifically reserved only for the high priest and that's also in Exodus Leviticus, so that that priest that is anointed is general, generally thought to mean the high priest. So then it goes into the kings, and that anointing was the principal and divinely appointed ceremony in the inauguration of Jewish kings. Um, that The rite was sometimes performed more than once. David was anointed with oil three times. Um, it has, you can you know, anoint inanimate objects. Um, and we see this where Jacob anointed the pillar at Bethel. Um, we see different articles of the temple that were anointed. Um, but back in those days, it was anointed with blood, some things with oil. Um, and, and also oh, I have here, it says, in the spiritual context, it says, um, well, we know that the oil in the spiritual context has to do with the Holy Spirit. And the, and of course, there's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then there's the healing, you know, where we read about it in the book of James. If there's any sick among you, um, let the elders anoint the sick with oil and pray and that he would be healed. And if he hath committed any sins, they would be forgiven. And we can get into what that means because people would, People would want to say, well, does that mean we don't have to confess our sins? I don't want to get into that. Yes, you have to confess your sins. You have to be half contrition. You have to have conviction. Um, I want to make that clear that you have to be specifically sorry for your own sins. And you have to go to Christ on your own to ask the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, to forgive you of your sins. But I don't want to get into it. I'm going to leave that there. So I want to talk about your home because that is the primary thing and i did want to give you all these things because the anointing oil is used for many things now that would take me like three hours to get through everything and who wants to sit through a three-hour lesson i personally don't unless it's completely something god has called me to do but anyways i'm going to keep going here i know i always keep saying and then i sidetrack okay so Here's the deal. I, I want to get into some real things because we, I, I, I want to put a spotlight on the enemy today, okay? I want to put a spotlight on the fact that um, we are in this world and in the word in 1 Thessalonians, it says, chapter 5, it says, for we know that the whole world lieth under the power of the wicked one. We know that, you know, the homes that we move into, lands that we purchase, um, if we purchase objects, maybe at a flea market or a garage sale, things, spirits travel with things. Spirits attach themselves onto objects. I'm going to start primarily with the house. Now, this is a spiritual connotation, and this is what Jesus says about a man. And you can find it, find it in Matthew chapter 12. And he says this, when an unclean spirit goeth out of a man, it walketh through the dry places, seeking to find rest, and it findeth none. 
So it saith unto himself, I will return unto the house from whence I came out. And it does return. And he finds it swept, cleaned, and garnished. And he taketh with him, he goeth and taketh with him, seven more spirits that are more wicked than himself, and they do enter in. And the last state of that man is worse than it was for him than it was in the beginning. Now that's talking about a person who has been uh, demonized, who has had demonic intrusion and has had a deliverance, but those spirits came back in because what Jesus means when that spirit returned, and remember, it is a bodiless person. Demons are bodiless persons, okay? And they want to get into anybody's body that they can and use that part of their soul, which is the personality of the person, to fulfill its lust of whatever it is, fear, lying, sexual immorality, drinking, whatever the sin is, those spirits need a body. But spirits, um, they cannot always, oh, wait, let me just finish that part because it says he go with, and he says, I will we'll return into my house. And being swept clean and garnished means that man was never filled with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. So it said, hey, I'm, going, I'm moving back in, okay? Now I'm going to transfer this onto our homes because clearly you see I'm in my home. You are watching this most likely in your home if you're not in your car or on your cell phone somewhere waiting for an appointment. So mostly, I'm going to put it to you this way. I'm going to start by using me for an example. Okay, now I've never owned a home. I have always lived in rental places, okay? So... I learned early on that spirits inhabit houses. They're left over from everybody who has lived in that residence. Most people were not Christians. Every form of sin that was done with each, with each family or persons that lived in that residence that committed sins those spirits remain behind and some of them go with the people into the next place. So those spirits, the worst the sin was that the people committed, they could have been doing witchcraft. They could have been like whatever, you know what I mean? Like there could have been violence in the house, a murder in the house, a suicide in the house, but those spirits, so I'm going into those heavy spirits. And a lot of times, the houses that we move into, we don't know that those things happened in our houses. You know, I do know that there is actually um, a website that you can go to that said who died in your house.com. Now, I am not going to pay a fee to find out who died here if anybody did. I made sure to do the work that I needed to do to claim this as my residence in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me go back a ways into my childhood, okay? I had a great grandmother who was, my mother was raised with her. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole details why her mother didn't raise her and she had to go live with her grandmother, but my mother had to go live with her grandmother. And my mother told me harrowing stories of how, well, first of all, before the harrowing stories, that my grandmother was clairvoyant clairaudient, meaning she can hear evil spirits, but they weren't evil to her, right? She was, she would tell you, she was like a fortune teller and she would, you know, do all that. Right. And my mother would tell me, she said, Joni, it was terrifying being in that house because she said one time she was sitting in her bed and her dolls rose up and they were floating in the room. I mean, this was it. Now these are extreme things. Okay. My mother is now saved. I want everybody to know that. So she came to Christ, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm cracking it open right now. And I'm just going to expose what the enemy does in your home to set you up and why you need to anoint it. And the basis of anointing that we've seen as a, as a foundation that I gave you, but I want to leave that behind because I want to go into it and I can feel now the Holy spirit moving in me. So let me get back to that story. So my mother would tell me like she would hear her cabinets opening and slamming in the kitchen. Um, she would hear her grandmother screaming for help. Somebody was trying to kill her in the middle of the night, choking her. 
um, I'm not going to go into all the things, but it was one thing after another of full blown demonic activity par excellence. Okay. So when my mother got married to my dad, um, she, you know, she wanted nothing to do with whatever it is her grandmother did, but those spirits followed her. So I remember growing up in a house where there was all kinds of crazy spiritual activity. And I'm not going to even talk about it because I don't want to bring in the presence of the enemy that way. I don't want to, I don't want to give him that kind of time, but let me tell you something. I saw stuff. Okay. And I being a child, I was like, what, you know, and uh, and I remember when my great grandmother passed away, um, somehow or another, my parents went to her house and they brought back this big, like eight by 10 folk black and white. I think it was even bigger than that. I mean, it was like huge, this black and white photo of her. And I remember my dad could not stand my great grandmother. He just thought she was a horrible person and wanted nothing to do with her. So he rammed her picture in our closet that me and my sister shared that room. And now, you know, of course, looking back, I was like, there was so much demonic activity going on in our personal bedroom. That would be hair raising if I told you. Um, but the point I want to make of it is, is there came a day that we moved out of that house and there we had, you know how you go back after everything, you've moved all the furniture out, you've cleared everything out and you go, well, let's just go through it one more time to make sure we've got everything. Okay. And I'll never forget that uh, we went back with my dad, me and my sister, and my dad went into our bedroom and he opened the closet. And I remember that moment and I was very young, but I'll never forget it. Like we stood there and we just stared like the whole house was like to the bone empty. Okay. But I remember even then, I mean, I can put words on it now because back then I was just, you know, I was a little kid. I was, I didn't know who Jesus was or anything, but when my dad opened that door and her picture was facing out, it was sitting on the ground facing out and I can feel a power coming out. I know now looking back what that was, because I remember we just stared at it like that. Like all of us felt afraid of it. And um, my dad had more knowledge of what was happening than me and my sibling. And my dad said, oh, no, no, no. This thing is not going with us to our new house. And he went outside. Okay, this is like old school back in the day, right in the 60s. And my dad took her portrait out, threw it on the lawn, went into the shed, got gas. No, no, wait, wait, I'm going ahead of it. My dad, he was a smoker. Okay. So he was like, and he, he cussed a lot. So he goes, I'm going to blankety blank this blank. You know I mean, we were like, oh my God, my dad just showed so much vehement hatred for this woman. He was like, because he knew that weird spiritual stuff was connected to her. So he took out his lighter. No, he took out a box of matches in his pocket and he struck it and he threw it on there. And we're talking, it was a summer day. It wasn't like it was on wet grass or anything. And as soon as he, it hit that picture, it went out and my dad did it again. And he did it again. He went through several matches and he goes, we'll see about this. He goes into the shed, gets some gasoline for his, from his lawnmower, you know, the little things you carry. And we are going, what in the world? Like he pours gasoline on her picture. He goes, this thing's going to burn. And he lit the match, threw it into the gasoline and it extinguished. It took him several times. Okay. This was brand new gas. And not, even if it was old gas, it would go boom. Okay. But I never forgot that. And finally it caught on fire. and We watched it burn. And that's such a picture in my mind. And so I remember, see, so I look back at those things as God teaching me from, though I wasn't knowing that I was being taught back then. Of course, when I became a Christian and grew up in the Lord and began, because I'm a fighter in the Lord, and the Lord has taught me these things. I was able to construct in my mind and remember all the things that I had seen, why and from whom and what objects brought in evil. And so when I started moving into places, I would of course pray over them. And there was one place in particular that I had moved into. And I, the day before, a couple days before we moved in, I was praying over it in the house that we were leaving. Cause I, you know, they were like still, I think 
touching up painting and doing things like I couldn't get in there. And so I was saying, you know, I was walking around my house going, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the new residents that we're moving into, I declare it to be ours in the almighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ and every evil spirit associated with every sin that has been committed in that place. I now rib, I now cast out, I bind and cast out in the name of Jesus Christ and so forth. Like I was doing this daily, sometimes two or three times within a couple of days. So when the day came that we went there, um, we were busy moving everything in and it was, um, a hot day, but it was still like turning from, uh, it was turning into spring. <clears throat> so you know how it is like the days are warm, but it goes into really cold temperatures right away, right around four or five o'clock. And so it was hot. So I opened the kitchen, uh, the bathroom window to let cool air and where we were going back and forth in the hallway. And at the evening, um, we didn't bring the big furniture in yet. And so we slept on the living room floor and all of a sudden, um, I was like, oh, no, I got to go to the bathroom. So I got up, I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, my goodness, it's freezing in here. So I shut the bathroom door. I go to bed. Seconds later, um, I got to get up again. I'm like, again, no, no. Um, someone in my house gets up because we're all in the living room. So someone in the house gets up, they go and they're like, why did you leave the window open? It's freezing. And I was like, I didn't. I closed it. So then they shut it because I heard them shut it. I'm like, what did that? Because per- I'm hearing them do it. I'm like, did somebody just open the window after I shut it? Like, why are they doing that? And so this went back and forth through the night. Like I would get up because I drank a bunch of water that whole day. And so I kept getting up and others were getting up to use the bathroom. So I kept hearing the window sh- opening and shutting, opening and shutting. Finally, I just passed out and fell asleep. And I woke up in the morning and the window was open. Finally, I said to everybody in the house, what in the world is going on with the window? Somebody said, you kept opening it. And I was like, no, I'm not. I didn't open it. They're like, well, I kept going in there to close it because you'd go in there and you would open it. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. Well, everybody have a good day. Everybody went off to their day. And I did my rebuking and anointing. I mean, and I went into it hard. Okay. I don't want to give you blow by blow descriptions. You know me well enough that I took it seriously. I even walked around the house. I anointed the four corners of the house. I anointed the, I anointed everything that could be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Walking, anointing, binding, rebuking, casting out. Okay. I was anointing things that don't even are necessary to be anointed, but I wasn't fooling around. Well, um, I had, I had to work at kicking those spirits out because things kept happening in that house that were manifesting. And later on, I found out from people that I knew that knew people that lived in that house. They said, Oh, you guys live in this house. (laughs) And I was like, you know, I, yeah, go ahead and tell me. And they said the stuff that went on in the house that you guys are living in, I can't even repeat. So you see, these spirits worked very hard at trying to trying to assert that that was their territory. But imagine the people that don't know how to do that, where they move into houses like that and they're all happy, like, yay, we're in a new house. And next thing you know, little by little, everybody's fighting. Everybody is um, becoming depressed. Everybody's becoming ill. Um, everybody's beginning to hate each other. It becomes so ugly. Now divorce is happening. Let me tell you another story. There was another house um, that we had moved in there. This was a long time ago. And a friend of mine and I, we were, we said, Hey, um, um, well, we, we found a house that we went to go look at. And I said, hold on a minute. I, and my friend brought a camera. I said, can I use your camera? I want, you know, I want to use it to take pictures because this is the house I like. So I took snapshots of uh, the front. We left the front door open because we were still walking around and I took a snapshot of it. And I went, um, and so we went around looking and then we shut the door and we took off. And later on, my friend uploaded the pictures because I wanted to send them 
to somebody to take a look at look at the pictures. And while we were looking at the pictures, I go, whoa, 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 because he was scrolling the, the pictures. I go, whoa, hold on, hold on a minute, go back. And let me tell you what I saw. When I took a snapshot of that front door, there was clearly, I'm not saying like, oh, it kind of looked like it. There was what looked like a grim reaper standing in the door. And it had a skeleton face and a like a cloak on. I mean, it was clearly letting me know this is my house. And so that's another thing. I'm not going to keep going into all these instances, but let me say this. You see, evil spirits have one job. If they cannot steal, kill, or destroy you personally, then they want to come into your house and they have a way, like I said, they deposit spirits, sin deposits spirits, okay? So when you move into a place, most of you already know, because a lot of you are mature in the faith, you already know to go in and you anoint. Now let's talk about the anointing oil, okay? Because the anointing oil, the oil in of itself is just oil, okay? You can go to your local supermarket, you can buy olive oil, which is a must. You I, I fully believe if it says olive oil in the Bible, don't use canola, don't use a vegetable. You use olive oil and then you pray over it, okay? You bless it and you hold it up to the Lord and you bless it. You ask the Lord to bless it, to confident that everything you touch, that it will be blessed and sanctified by him, meaning set apart and made holy. Demons love objects. They love to attach themselves onto objects. And because that's how you bring them into your house. So you can have a squeaky clean spiritual environment. But if you go to, like I said, a flea market, a garage sale, um, somebody's giving you clothes handed down from somebody else or whatever, and you don't know who it came from. I would definitely be anointing things with oil or definitely praying over them. But what the anointing oil does, it is um, like, not like, what, what it does, once it is blessed, it attracts the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is a marker. Let's, let's look back during the time of Exodus chapter 12, when the 10th and final plague of Egypt was happening, when God said, okay, here's the deal. And Moses tells them, because God says, okay, tell the people to kill a lamb tonight and to take the blood and anoint the lintels of the front door, the sides, the top and the sides. Notice he doesn't do it on the bottom because we don't trample on the blood. Okay, so we anoint, he anointed the sides and the top. It said, so when the destroying angel comes, the death angel, he will see the blood and he will pass over your house and you'll be despaired. You'll be, you know, the first child would be spared. But, you know, in this case, we're now looking at the fact that the blood has already been shed by the lamb. That's why now we anoint with oil. And when we anoint it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you what the key factor is here, okay? Like I said in the beginning, many people go, you know, someone wrote to me once and said, you know, Joni, um, there's so much evil going on in my house with my spouse and my kids um, that I'm anointing it every single day, every single day. Now, I told her, you don't need to anoint every single day. And I, what I'm what I told her I'm going to tell you the oil is a symbol it is a marker of the power of the ownership of Jesus Christ it becomes sanctified it becomes a thing consecrated set apart to God I don't care if it's these glasses if they're like say somebody gave these glasses to me and I don't know who they are probably a good idea for me is, I mean, these are just cheap plastic glasses. I mean, I pray over it, but if it was something other than that, like maybe furniture, you know, cause you don't want to put oil on something that's going to stain it. So you can pray over those things. But what you have to do is you got to do it by faith. Okay. 
because a lot of people put, they don't realize that they're doing it, but they're putting faith in the oil itself. Like I anoint it with oil. I'm going to put more or more oil here, more oil there. Look at, you can hose your house down with oil. Okay. That's not going to make Christ be there more and keep Satan out more. You understand what I'm saying? What you're doing is you are declaring to the powers that be. You are declaring to the enemy that this house belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. That, first of all, you anoint yourself, okay? And then you anoint everything in your house. But like I said, you are declaring to the powers of darkness that the house you're living in now belongs to you. And even your unsaved family members that are bringing demons into your house, because maybe you have, you know, teenagers, let's face it. A lot of you have teenagers that are sinning like crazy. Maybe there are scenarios where they're really taking over the house and they're doing things that you cannot believe you would never put up with, but they're stronger than you. A lot of people do. A lot of people have teenagers I'm just going to say it, that are evil to their Christian parents and have taken over the house and they're having sex in the house. They're watching pornography in the house. They're playing evil games, um, video games that are completely occult. They're practicing the occult in the house. Um, sometimes it's the spouse, it's the other spouse. So I'm not going to go into who it is, but there are times... Christians, I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that if you have someone or people living in your house that are evil, God is going to honor you that if you are the head of the house, if this is not a roommate situation, again, I'll go into that, but you have the right to anoint, okay? You have the right to anoint and say, put that mantle on, okay? Because listen, anointing means power, the word uh, Greek in the anointing is charisma, okay? Like, no, gifts mean charisma, okay? Greek means gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, gifts in Greek, that word is charisma or charismata. Charismatic and charismata, meaning smear or dab, okay? Rub. Now, in when we put the oil on something, we are putting that oil, that presence of the Lord is attracted. He attracts, you know, he's attracted to that. Oh, I'm trying to find the right words. Okay, but let, let, let me finish this thought because I kind of have like two veins going on in my mind. You're like, what's going on, Joni? That's what's happening. It's like, I'm thinking of two things because I want to give it to you right. So, Remember when Jesus said, tarry ye here in Jerusalem. Remember he said that in um, Acts 1.8. He said, tarry ye here in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. The word endued in Greek means to wrap up or clothe upon yourself. Okay. With power. So now that we have, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that means you have been endued with power from on high, okay? So when you are endued with power from on high and you pray and ask God to anoint the oil and make it holy, the spirit that was it that is in you, the Holy Spirit, he anoints that oil. And by faith in Jesus Christ that is in us, he puts his mark on that oil. And Satan sees that mark, just like he sees those who are covered in blood, who were purchased by the blood. He sees the Holy Spirit in you. So the thing with a lot of people is they do not realize that that anointing power is something Satan cannot go against. Okay. But you see, you have to employ faith when you're going around anointing your doors. See, when I anoint, I anoint my bedroom doors, bathroom doors, every window, all the furniture. I anoint things. And as I go, I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me. 
But as I'm going by faith, I'm saying by the faith in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, you cannot have that. And something else I've done, like, you know, with my kids, like when they've been at school, because when they get older, you know, they're like, you're not going to anoint me. Like if they're unsaved, right? Like I would just go in the room and I'd anoint, anoint their headboard and their footboard. And I would no, anoint, you know, places and things where people sat. And I can tell you right now, I noticed that things calmed down with spiritual activity when I did that. Um, because there is power, not in the oil in itself, because we know that the composition of it is still oil. It is still a natural substance. But again, when the Holy Spirit is, he blesses it, that means he attaches himself onto that oil. Okay. So um, the oil would serve then as a token of confidence in the power of our petition. Okay. It's a token of our confidence to say, and you let the enemy know, because I believe this with all my heart that um, so many Christians that I have known, there is such, I hate to use the word failure because I don't want to call people failure, but they put a lot of emphasis only on the good things. Like I'm just, I just want to talk about the Lord. I just love the Lord and I'm, and I'm going to pray over my house and I'm just going to believe the Lord to bless our house. But there's times you have to be aggressive. If there has been witchcraft that has been practiced in your residence, if there has been things that have happened in that house, um, let's just say like a, a murder, um, like a really radical sin, then you are going to want to, um, let me find something here because I want you to hear something. Um, then you're going to have some really crazy activity. Um, Again, I want to I, like, I, I want to read this. It's kind of long. I don't know if you guys want me to, but it's so good. And my friend told me this story a long time ago and she brought it up again. And um, um, maybe just see, I'm going to see if I can read just a little bit. And I don't want to get, like I said, stuck in reading, but um, her and her husband work. I'm not going to name names, of course, or what state they live in or anything like that, but um, they are teachers that are, that are in the school system. So I want you to hear this, okay? About five years ago, my husband was transferred to a school and he ended up working there for two years. In his 20 plus year career, never had he experienced such spiritual battle. There were many accusations against him. The kids often lied, the principal appeared to despise him and was very critical of him. At that time, my sons went to that school as well. The kids at that school as well as staff reported seeing demonic figures roaming the school. We prayed over, we prayed over and anointed that school. There was a little girl in my son's class who was being tormented by demons. We prayed for her and I spoke with her mom. In the end, my husband was transferred out of there much to his relief. Six years later, we reconnected with the girl from my son's class, the one who had been tormented. It was a very interesting conversation. I asked her about her experience at that school and she told us she would often see demonic entities all throughout the school. Then she added, they were everywhere in the school, all except one place. They seemed disallowed from entering the music room or even in the hall leading to the music room. We had prayed over my husband's room and anointed it with oil. And another friend of mine anointed her classroom with oil due to so many of the kids getting involved in witchcraft and perversion. They were even pulling out and using tarot cards during her class. The school was the first in the county to be starting an after-school club for gay, lesbian, and transgender students. Shortly after that, a student brought a gun to school, shots were fired, no students or staff or, uh, were injured or killed. Public school teachers are in the trenches and we ought to be praying for them regularly. They are the lights in a dark Babylonian public school system. Um, and let me go just a little bit further because she said, furthermore, she had sent me another email and she said, fast forward six years and um, so she was, she said, six years afterwards, 
um, her son began asking about that little girl that he met. And this little girl, according as what I understand, that she was like this shy little girl. Um, she, you know, she just stuck to herself. And um, But my friend's son said that he just, because he's such a kind person, that he just started talking to her and being nice to her. And, and I guess one day, just because she trusted him, she... Um, lifted up her shirt and she showed the inside of her arms and there was these long gouges like claw mark gouges and he was like oh my gosh what is happening and she went on to tell him she said there is this evil spirit that shows up in my bedroom I don't remember if she said it was every night but like all the time and it would pull her by the hair out of her bed and throw her on the ground and it would brutalize her and claw her up that was terrifying. And so I want to get into this. Um, so that who's who that little girl was. And because when they moved away, my friend's son had been thinking about this little girl, like, I wonder how she is, you know? So this is email number two. And she said, uh, my son had been asking me about that little girl at his fifth grade class. And he asked me to find the girl from school because he was wondering about her. So I did some phone calling and found her mother and asked about her. And so she said, so of course it was six years later that she made those statements that the demons were free to roam. No, she said, she said six years later, she was of course older. So now she's able to say it better where she was saying that the demons were free to roam the school everywhere except that one place. And, uh, you know, so she went into her uh, memory that in that wicked school that she said they were never, she, she, I guess because she was so demonized that she was able to recognize and see evil spirits. And she said the one thing she said she knew that they were never allowed to go into my friend's husband's music room or even in the hall. She said it was just as though they were prevented from coming in even the hallway near his room. And, you know, I have to say that my friend contacted her mother back in that day and her mother, you know, um, was my, my friend called the mother and said, you know, I just wanted to be able to help you. And the mother claimed that she was a Christian. She was a Baptist, but Baptists do not believe in the power of the Holy spirit. They believe the Holy spirit was only, um, manifested to put together the church and to establish it in the beginning. And from then on, just the gospel is preached, right? Um, but I don't believe in cessationism at all. I am a fully operational, born again, blood bought, operating in the gifts, Holy Spirit, you know, filled, overflowing Christian. And I know many of you are too. Um, but that mother, because of her, her belief, rejected the help of my friend because I know my friend, she would go into the schools, she would go into places and she would take spiritual authority. And I say that with, you know, absolute reverential awe in regard to Jesus Christ. It is a very critical, it is a very serious thing. But um, that mother just sidestepped my friend and was like, oh, we'll be okay. So later on, when my friend did talk to her, the mother was like, oh, we're okay now. Everything's okay. But let me tell you something. Spirits follow people around. And I can go into all different kinds of scenarios of how spirits enter into your house and how they try to attack your family and bring your family down. But the one thing Satan does not want you to hear today is that when you pray over that oil, the Holy Spirit, by faith, that every place you mark in your house and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that it belongs to the Lord, that the Holy Spirit will be, a, will be upon that oil and Satan can't stand that oil. Okay. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember the story that I told you, my husband and I, Jonathan, we had to move. We were like in between houses, you know, and so we had to move into this one apartment and above us. I know I told you this story before, 
but I want to get into the nitty gritty. Before we moved into this house, I was like, I was not looking forward to moving into this little apartment, but we had nowhere else to go. So as usual, I was praying over this little apartment. I was like, Lord, I know this area where it is. And it's well known for being like a kind of a raunchy party area, but you know, we just need to save money. We'll just focus on saving money, Lord, and you're going to help us get out of there. And so I was praying over that house before we moved in and I had a dream. And in my dream, I saw us, me and my husband and my son, moving things in, you know, moving day, carrying boxes in. And in my dream, I was standing partway between the kitchen and the living room. And while they were busy doing things, I saw something in the corner of my eye and I looked up and I saw a black spider in the corner ceiling hanging down on a web. And I, I hate spiders. So in my, and, and in my dream, because it was a spiritual dream by my spirit, I even knew in my spirit, that's a, de that's a demon. Okay. Because I've seen so many spider dreams that morphed into demons and they can't hold their shape. That's what demons do when they appear to you in your dream. They try to appear as a person or a thing like a lion or some terrifying thing, but they can't hold their form for long, but their thing is to fear you, to cause you to fear. So I thought that thing's going to die. So in my dream, I grabbed a broom because I was just going to, you know, kill it, you know. So by the time I got back, the thing saw me coming and I can feel that it had emotion. Like you can see my emotion, right? You know, I have intellect, but I can feel in that spider that that was a person in there, not a human person, but a demonic person because all demons have personalities. They have a mind, they have a will, they have emotions. And so that thing saw me coming and I knew that thing was trying to let me know this is my building. Okay. And so the closer I got to it, it started to just grow when it was like as big as my hand hanging down from the ceiling. But by the time I reached it, there was two other little ones hanging next to it because remember demons work in colonies in buildings in houses at workplaces. And so I, so as soon as I, I threw the broom down and I was right when I said in the name of Jesus, like that, that thing disappeared upstairs and I saw it go into the ceiling. Like it, nothing was there, like just a smooth white ceiling. And I knew, I thought, here we go. So when we moved there short afterwards, there was a young couple living above us. And I thought, oh, I don't have a good feeling about these, this couple. Well, they were partiers and they would be up all night long. And I was like, this is torture. We can hear them cussing and they were playing terrible music and they're getting drunk. And then they're getting, you know, the more they drink in the middle of the night and demons are stronger at night. Okay. Because we're weaker at night, but they, when people get drunk, you know, it says in the word, they, that get drunk, they get drunk at night. Unsaved children, people are called children of the night. So um, I won't stay too long in this story, but it got to the point where it was getting so radical that he was beating her up. And um, one night he was out there and he was in a, he was on drugs. He was drinking um, and he was, I heard something slam against our front window. And I thought, dear God in heaven, like my son and I were like terrified. Jonathan was at work. I go out there because I'm thinking I hear shattering glass. I go out there. I see glass. Now, our window didn't break, but we had all these like Malibu lights everywhere. This guy was breaking everything. And I just said, I pointed my finger to him because he was upstairs standing there. I said, stop it. I said, stop it. I said, you guys have been doing this every night. I said, we are older people. Please, please stop. Well, he didn't like that I told him to stop. And so from then on, he started stomping on our ceiling all night long. Turns out I asked around about people about them. They said, those people are heroin addicts. His girlfriend's a meth addict. He does meth too. And they drink and he was always drinking. So you know what I did? I anoint, I said, I'm going to anoint this place. And I anointed it and all hell broke loose. He turned into a wild animal. Like if I don't have, there's no time to describe all the things that this young man was doing. He was a professional. Okay. 
and he was wicked to the core. We had to call the police on him three times. But I noticed that after I had anointed, um, he kind of toned it down. And I said to myself, I'm going to anoint this place one more time. Something said to me, you better watch out because if you anoint this place, he's going to go crazy again. And I thought, well, I don't want any of his spirits. Because remember that spirit, what those, those spiders went up in the ceiling? That's because they belong to him. And so I anointed the house one more time. That same night, he went absolutely insane. Insane. We had to call the police again. It was dramatic. We got out of there. We finally fled, wound up here. But you see, that place was so infested with evil spirits. And I'm telling you right now, even if you move into a new home and you're like, but Joni, we moved into a brand new home, anoint it anyway. I'm not talking about being paranoid. I'm talking about being um, intelligent. And if you truly are serving the Lord, it's pretty much a guarantee. The enemy's going to lay low in certain places. It could be cursed ground. You can have neighbors across from you that are, you know what I mean? I don't want to go into scenarios, but anoint your homes and trust the Lord because those things will not be able to pass what you anoint. Whatever ye devote unto the Lord, like I've taught this before, the last chapter in the book of Leviticus, it says that, um, that everybody, whatever they wanted to devote, it says they brought unto the priest, whether it be cattle, whether it be objects, didn't say objects, but things, or it said what anything that they devoted unto the Lord, they gave it to the priest as a devoted thing unto the Lord. And once it exchanged hands and they declared it to be a devoted thing unto the Lord, nobody dared ever stretch back their hand to take it back. Because once you devote something to the Lord, he takes it up. It becomes his forever. That's why we devote our children. That's why we pray over these homes and devote it to the Lord. I don't care. I don't care. This is a rental apartment. Of course, I, I went through it and I said, I devote this house to the Lord. That it be the dwelling place of our God. That the presence of the Holy Spirit will always be felt in this place. That every room and every square inch of this house come under the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Now, what? here's how you do it. Here, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to do it, okay? Go get your oil. I don't mean right this second, but you get some oil. You pour it into a dish. You don't have to go buy it from some special anointed ministry. You can pray over it yourself, okay? And I would I pour it into a dish and I hold it up just like this. And I say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this oil that is now going to be blessed by you. I ask you to bless it now and to make it holy, holy, holy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it will be the mark of your power as it is the mark of the blood of the lintel on the lintels of the Israelites on the night that they fled. This will also represent the blood of the Lord, of the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world. And then what I do is then I stand in the center of my house. There's something about something. I know that's the whole, what the Holy Spirit taught me. He said, stand in the middle of your house. And so stand, I stand in the middle of my house and I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God whom I serve, whose I am, and before whom I walk. I now declare to the heavens above and to the earth beneath and to the unseen forces of Satan that this house I now declare to belong to the Lord Jesus Christ that as long as we are legal residents of this house, which we are, then I say in the name of Jesus, no evil spirit 
any spirit that is here, I now begin to serve you notice that you are now to go out. Begin to loose yourself from this house. All spirits that have been deposited here from the very first moment somebody moved in here to the last that committed sins of every kind, every filthy act of sexual immorality, every occult and witchcraft spirit, any possible murders and suicides and drug addiction and spirits of sorcery and violence. And I mean, what, and I, you know, I let the Holy Spirit bring it to my mind. And so, and then what I do is I say, I say that to you now. And then I say, Lord, now I go about this house. And as I go about, Lord, and I begin to start walking and I dip my finger in the oil and I start with the front door and I anoint the top lintels and I put a cross, just a symbol of the Lamb of God, that finished work of Jesus Christ. And I say, in the name of Jesus, there will be no evil thing that will come nigh this dwelling. And every person that will come into this house that has evil spirits, I declare in Jesus' name, those spirits must remain outside. And then I do that. I go to the back door, I do the same thing. And as I'm walking, I'm saying, I praise the name of the Lord in this place. I praise the name of Jesus Christ over every item, over every square inch of this place in the name of Jesus. I go, I'll, I'll touch the carpets. I'll touch the inside of the closets. I anoint the head and footboards. I anoint where we sit and everything. And as I go, I begin to hear the Holy Spirit. Spirit of, he'll tell me something. Spirit of mourning. Oh, there's a spirit of mourning here. I rebuke you, spirit of mourning in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll, you know, I'll keep going. Spirit of, spirit, you know, he'll tell me something. Um spirit of lies and i'll go you spirit of life because what the holy spirit will do in that moment as you're going he's speaking to you okay he's letting you know who's there and so what i do is i'll open up when i'm done when i'm completely done i will open up the front door not that spirits can't go through walls but as a token I open up the front door. I go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ now and forevermore. And you know what? It clears. You will feel, feel the atmosphere clear out. And I want to share one last thing with you because I want to talk about anointing yourself. And then I'm going to be done. A lot of times in our life, there's somebody that will not like us um, and they will say something evil about us. They will be speaking against us, um, which is the spirit of witchcraft. OK, it is a spirit of murder. You know, gossip is the same as shedding of innocent blood. It says that in um, uh, it says that in Isaiah. I don't have the verse before me, but it says it in Isaiah and it says it in um I think it says it in Ex, uh, Leviticus, but it talks about it in the law. It says that um, the speaking against somebody is the same as murder because you empower a evil spirit when, when you're speaking against them, that you are empowering a spirit to destroy that person through your words to destroy them. That's why death and life are in the power of it. I want to share something that happened to me not long ago. I remember there was a day, like I said to myself, I got up to do my devotions and I thought, why? I feel like there's something blocking me. Like I, I'm trying to pray, but I can feel something is coming against me, but I couldn't think of anything, right? Well, this happened each day for five days and each day it was exponentially worse. I thought, what is going on here? I can't pray. Like I got to the point where I was like, and I remember even saying to the Lord, what is it like toward the third and fourth day? Okay, the fifth morning, I said to myself, 
I sat on my couch and nothing like it was like a block of cement in front of my face. And I, I don't put up with that. So I stood up in the middle of my living room and I said, Lord, show me what is blocking me and show me now. And I heard from within with power. And he said the name of the person. He said, the person's name is cursing you. The moment I heard that, I felt a thrust of power from the Holy Spirit enter in. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I said, I thank you for revealing what it is. I said, first of all, I said, I want to declare that I forgive that person that is speaking against me and cursing my life. I pray that you bless that person. I pray that you honor that person. And as I was saying it, I could feel feel immense power of both kingdoms all around me. And I mean, it was a war around me and it was real. And it, it was, I could feel power from within coming without, I can feel power without from the enemy trying to deflect the power of the Holy spirit. That's the best way I could put it. And then I said, and now in the name of Jesus Christ, I said, I rebuke you, you spirits of curse. I rebuke those curses that have been spoken against me. Depart from me and get away from me and come off of me in the name of Jesus. And I said a whole lot more. I'm not going to get into it. But right then I felt something immediately like go like this and it came off of me. Next thing you know, I can feel the war around me. And... I just, I was silent after that. And for that, whole, and let me tell you something. I went back to sitting on my couch and I was silent because I felt this release in the spirit that I had no idea that spirit, those evil spirits were attaching themselves onto me. And when the sun came up, John got up, went to work, and the house was cleared out like there was a lightness in the house. There was light. It was a spiritual light. I can't describe it. But I knew that whole time. I didn't know that whole time. Do you hear what I'm saying? I didn't know that that whole time that those spirits were upon me and blocking me because of someone who was offended with me and wanted to harm me. That person is still forgiven by me. And I want to say this. I anointed myself and I thanked our God in heaven. So I'm going to end it there. Always anoint your home. The power isn't in the oil. It is in the virtue of the Holy Spirit that blesses that oil. It is the mark of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Satan understands that. So when you do it, you tell him you're not coming in here. And you take your filthy demons and get out. That's how you do it. And then you invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill this place up. And to fill it with joy. That's what I do at the end. Fill it with joy. Fill it with beauty and the glory of your presence. That all who come in will come into the presence of the Lamb of God. Okay, you guys, I think that's it. I hope you received that. And um, I want you to have a good day today. Know you are absolutely loved by Jesus. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, tomorrow is Jonathan's birthday. He, um, I asked him, what do you want to go do? And he goes, I want to go to Ruby's and have a hamburger. <laughs> he's so funny. I remember in the old days, I'm going to do a hundred things right now. He's like, I think I just want to go to Ruby's and have a hamburger. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a good day. We're going to be driving up the coast and enjoying it. The weather's been so nice. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Have a wonderful day today. Have a beautiful weekend. Um, uh, also, like and share this video. Please subscribe. Um, and please pray about becoming a Patreon supporter. It is such a huge help to me to do these um, 
uh, these videos. And I, I think that's it. And don't forget Monday, the Lord willing, I am going to talk about how to pray my favorite subject. All right, you guys, I love you so much. Go with the Lord and Shalom.